Hey guys, welcome to Nayo, a new gaming channel. Today I'm gonna guide you through some of the core elements of Shadow Priest for you to achieve your 15 key achievement and curve perhaps a few mythic bosses. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Firstly, we'll be taking a look at talents, starting with single target. First row, we always take Fortress of the Mind. Other talents don't grant us anything worth considering. They don't contribute to anything in raiding, particularly. On the second talent row, body and soul tends to be the pick, though it all comes down to utility and usage. Whatever you choose, make sure you are using it. Sand lane sometimes does seem play because it just grants us a big amount of healing. If your guild is struggling on the healing department, then this might be the pick for you. On the third talent row, Twist and Fate is the go-to talent. It gives us an execute phase and increases our overall damage, especially when it comes to single target. Fourth row tends to be quite useless when it comes to raiding, but generally speaking, go for Last Word if you need kick, and go for Psychic R if you can stun an ad, for example. Next row is Guaranteed Auspicious Spirit, more Insanity Generation, and Damage Contribution. The other talents tend to be for AoE. They do see some play on specific bosses, and if you're trying to log, but otherwise, if you're unsure, just go for Spirits. Level 45 row tends to be Void Torrent for the overwhelming damage and the good insanity regen, typically used for before a burst or if you just need the insanity and you're still waiting on your burst cooldown. Last row, Hungering Void is just the must have raiding talent. Damage increased by 10% when you use Void Bolt, a much longer burst. Yeah, there's not much else to say, it's just the cherry on the cake for us. Having the talents ready, let's talk Covenants and Conduits. Generally speaking, Night Fae in PvE is the overall winner, the ability Fae Guardians granting a CD reduction on either yourself or someone else, so you can actually reduce the cool, uh, big cooldown like Combustion, which is quite good, as when, especially when it comes to dungeon, but can also be used for raids, of course. It makes your burst more common and allows you to have a void form with PI and a void form without, making the spec quite smoother if you're using it on yourself, of course. Not only does Night Fae give us a great ability through Fae Guardians, it also grants us Soul Shape, which is an amazing mobility spell and fixes one of our greatest weaknesses as priests, lack of movement. Anyway, next up, Venfe. Venfe grants us Mind Games, a very hard single target hitting ability with a 45 second cooldown, as well as it generates a bunch of insanity, which is great for us. Being Venfe also awards the ability Door of Shadows, a teleport, which honestly can quite be compared to Soul Shape, but has a shorter cooldown and can be useful at times. Quite close to Soul Shape, just not there yet. When it comes to Necrolords, you get an AoE dot which actually is affected by your mastery, which makes it so you have a huge burst when you're in void form and you have the Necrolord dot and the rest of your dots, making Necrolords probably the most bursty one out of the lot. However, uh, Fleshcraft is kind of lacking as a secondary ability compared to the other uh, Covenants in general, uh, aside for Kyrian, which we'll come to in a second. But yes, uh, great Burst, not so much great secondary ability, but still a valid choice. However, when it comes to Kyrian, the last covenant, uh, it lacks in too many ways. The Boon of Ascended, which is the ability, has a 3 minute cooldown and you want to use it with PI, you want to use it with Void Form. <sighs> doesn't quite work as well, uh, because 3 minute cooldown doesn't line with anything aside for... Um, your void form, but you might have to wait an extra minute for your PI to come back. It's pretty messy, and honestly, I would not recommend going for Kyrian. The potion, which is the secondary uh, effect, as well as the, the Kyrian pet or bird, whatever you want to call it. Um, although it's a 20% healing and removing ticking damage, which is nice, I guess, on some bosses when it comes to uh, Nafria. <laughs> 
it's it's lacking. It doesn't fix any of our weaknesses, our core weaknesses. For example, Soul Shape fixes some of our mobility problems. Same with Venfear. Fleshcraft can be quite good as a, it still is a shield. You can predict damage and perhaps help, which is technically one also of our weaknesses. Is we only have one defensive when it comes to dungeon specifically. But anyway, I would not recommend Kyrian. When it comes to conduit specifically potency, there are two that outshine the rest. The commonly used ones are Dissonant Echoes and Haunting Apparitions. Dissonant Echoes giving Mindflay a chance to give you a proc of Void Bolt that deals a bit more damage than your usual Void Bolt. While in Void Form, it also has the effect of giving you a chance to remove the cooldown on Void Bolt when you use a Void Bolt, which can make your Void Form longer via the Hungering Void Talent, which is great for us. Haunting Apparition is a straight damage increase to Apparitions, and therefore is a great choice for every type of content, because it just deals more damage on single target, deals more damage on multi-target, it's just an overall damage increase, and therefore a good choice to begin with. When it comes to Endurance Conduit, I would usually go with Light's Inspiration. Now the reason for this is it makes your Desperate Prayer a better defensive overall and also makes you less reliant on Dispersion. The other choices are reliable but if you are using them make sure you are actually using them while fighting both in Raid and Dungeons. When it comes to Finesse I would usually go with Clear Mind for dungeons and move with grace for raid because grip is a huge mechanic when it comes to mythic raiding and sometimes as well in HC. So now that we have the talents sorted, let's take a look at how the hell you're meant to play a Shadow Priest. The key thing you have to remember is that we are a dot spec. We always have been since Classic. It's not a secret. Not only are we a dot spec, but currently our overall damage on a target is increased based on the amount of dots we have on that specific target. Why, you might be wondering. The answer is our mastery, Shadow Weaving. It's part of the new mastery we got we're along with the Shadow Priest revamp during Shadowlands. What does our mastery do, you might be asking? Well, our mastery makes it so that our damage on any target is increased based on the amount of dots currently on it, and on how much mastery you ha your character has. It works the following way. Increase the damage on a target by the percent mastery you have. Then, times it by the amount of dots. So let's say we have three dots on that target. Vampiric Touch, Shadow World Pain, and Devouring Plague. And we have 10% mastery on this character. The damage increase is 30%. A last but not least important note on our mastery is that while being in Void Form, we get the full value of our mastery. So our damage during Void Form deals the same amount as if we had all three dots on that target, regardless of the target being affected by your dots. This is key to doing maximum damage, and you want to keep that in mind while using spells such as Void Torrent, Mind Games, and Void Bolt procs, depending on if you're a Vanfair when it comes to Mind Games. Anyway, now with Mastery in mind, I can explain the basic rotation and bursting rotation to you. Now with mastery in mind, let's take a look at our rotation and the priorities in the Shadow spec. The Shadow Priest rotation relies heavily on priorities such as Void Bolt, how much insanity you have, and if you need to use your utility for the raid group such as Grip, Vampiric Embrace, etc. etc. Whenever you start a boss, you want to build up some insanity so you can start to burst with a Devouring Plague on the target and therefore get your mastery bonus up. The way to do this is to dot the boss with Vampiric Touch and Shadow Ward Pain, followed by Void Torrent to generate some insanity. Quick note, this is the only time in a fight you want to use your Void Torrent without Devouring Plague on a target to get more damage from your mastery. 
The next step is to activate your PI if you're using it on yourself, then use the variant plague. Go into void form and instantly use void ball to get your hungering void talents worth. While using void form, you also want to use your on use trinket if you're using one. After activate your shadow fiend for some extra insanity generation. The next step depends heavily on what covenant you are playing. The general thing to do is use your covenant abilities such as mind games, necro dots, or fey guardians. Finally, you have to use your void bolt on CD to keep your void form up. Use the variant plague to make sure you never reach insanity cap. And lastly, use mind blast when the previous two are not an option. Mind blast is a third priority because you'll be using the stratagem legendary most of the time. Outside of void form, your priority is to get as much uptime on the variant plague as possible to get a maximum value out of your mastery while using your mind blast. Void bolt procs and void torrents. Alright guys, now let's look at M plus talents. Here I'll be showing you the usual M plus build as well as some other viable options that can work in specific dungeons. Anyway, without further ado, let's get to it. First row on this row, generally speaking, it's more of a preference row. The two competitive choices are Death and Madness as well as Fortress of the Mind. Death and Madness generating insane amounts of insanity as well as doing some nice execute damage if well used. Fortress tends to be more of a harder keys pick to focus down priority adds or bosses if you are a tyrannical player. Second row, body and soul, usually the way to go, just like in single target for the same exact reasons, but if you do choose something else, make the most out of it. Anyway, on this row, choose what you feel the most comfortable with. Fourth row, psychic. Fourth row, psychic horror is the go-to choice when it comes to M+, but if your group is heavy on the stun department, then last word can also be a very viable option. Fifth row, Shadow Crash, a massive AoE damage ability that does more damage based on your uh, mastery and how many dots you have on the target. It's a big AoE burst, and in most dungeons, it is the most reliable one to choose. However, I will make a mention for Psychic Link as it can be great if you are playing with the stratagem Legendary, Fortress of the Mind and Misery. It's known as a Psy build and oh boy is it a blast to play in M+. It can be really good, especially when it comes to Mist of Son of Scythe, Fate of Pain and Spies of Ascension. Next row, Void Torrent and Mindbender are both the good two choices, Mindbender producing amazing insanity and allowing us to spam Siri Nightmare like never before, but Void Torrent allowing us to do some great priority damage, which can be great for tyrannical weeks and other weeks with bolstering affix and similar affixes. Last row, for the same reason as it was good in single target, it is great if not greater for M+. Longer burst, just a way to go for our SSPs at the moment, what can I say? Having the M+, talents, let's now talk M+, as an SP. M+, as an SP, tends to be quite engaging as it requires you to have your dots up, using utility when called for, and keeping up with the damage demand of a DPS. Now, I'm gonna tell you just that. Keep in mind that we have utility and therefore have a lot of value with just that to begin with. The most important thing, just like in single target, is to keep your dots up. Having Vampiric Touch before bursting on a 6 mob pack tends to be the way for us. Any more though, and you could probably just skip Vampiric Touch and just spam Searing Nightmare. However, when it comes to Shadow World Pain, it's one of the easiest things to keep up on an AoE, especially if you're using Searing Nightmares, you can just spam that and you just get the dot on the target anyway. A common question that arises is, when to use Searing Nightmare, and how many targets to use it against. Now, the answer is do not use it on the free targets. If you're using it on free targets, make sure you have the insanity to back that up. Above free targets, well, it gets kind of easier because Mindset actually generates plenty of insanity for you, for you to just start spamming Searing Nightmare non-stop. Understanding over how much and when to use sanit insanity will usually reward you with higher overall DPS. 
The last thing I want to mention is our utility and how to use it. Firstly, the Stockmaster spell. There are countless ways to use it, for example, on the Bursting Affix, probably the most known one, but also to remove CC like Frog from the Voodoo Troll in front of a car, or even to dispel dots on a tank or the group when the heal fails to do so, or just can't because there are too many things to dispel and therefore he decides to dispel the priority thing. Next up in our toolkit we have Leap of Faith, which is one of the most important ones. It can help saving time by just gripping a an ally that's quite far away from where your destination is, or saving them from a mechanic. I'm thinking second boss of Alls of Atonement, when he does the jump, you can just grip him, just you can grip your ally just before the jump lands, removing a lot of damage, which can be actually quite useful when it comes to tyrannical weeks. Vampiric Embrace is also something that we must mention because it's quite useful on pride and hard to team mechanics. Though the heal is not the greatest in the world, it still allows for some great survivability when called for or when your heal actually lacks any cooldowns. Lastly, Purge and Disease Dispel. Having a purge in some of the new dungeons is almost a must have and a dispel against diseases is also great considering that most dungeons have this type of debuff for the tanks. Anyway, I think it's time to wrap it up, so thanks a bunch for watching, sub and like if you enjoyed the vid, leave some criticism if you think I can improve anything, and we'll see you guys next time. See you around guys.